and now we're talking about LDL. LDL, lousy LDL, okay? But we're going to take LDL a step further. When we talk about LDL and when you get it on your lipid profile, what you're getting is something called LDL cholesterol. But what actually causes heart disease and stroke is having too many LDL particles in your bloodstream. And LDL particles, I'll slip to that one here, is not the same thing as LDL cholesterol. LDL is actually a particle, it looks like this. It's got cholesterol and triglycerides on the inside. Those are the fatty oils, okay? Cholesterol and triglycerides are fats. Fats don't float around in our bloodstream as fat. They would clot up our arteries and we die. Water and oil don't mix. Cholesterol and triglycerides don't mix with blood. So how in the world do they get from the liver that's making the cholesterol that we need for cell membranes and hormones to the organs that need it for function? It has to be carried. It has to be carried in some vehicle that allows the fat to float around in the, in the, in the blood. So basically it's carried in these, in these particles. So cholesterol and triglycerides are on the inside, and on the outside, basically the shell, are phospholipids and these apoproteins that allow it to be soluble in plasma. Does that make sense? So when we measure LDL, what we really want to measure is how many LDL particles you have. Because LDL particles are the drivers of the disease. If you have too many LDL particles, you ultimately develop heart disease and stroke. Not the same thing as having LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is just simply the content of the particles. And I'm going to illustrate that a couple ways visually to help you understand that. This is a concept that is confusing to people. And I'm certain that most of you have probably not had LDL particles directly assessed. It's an NMR lipo profile that is drawn. It's a lab test that's drawn that would identify that. And most people don't routinely have that done. So I'm going to sh show you again. LDL particles are what drive the disease. The more particles you have, the more disease you ultimately end up with. If you needed to know one number, and that was it, I want to know what my LDL particles were. And if they're less than 1,000, I'm happy camper. If they're more than that, I need to be doing something about it. Okay? All right. So here we'll illustrate this concept again. So again, this is the particle. So this is an LDL <laughs> particle. This is LDL cholesterol. In the bottom of the screen, you can see what LDL cholesterol is. They're not the same thing. Now, in my lipid clinic, I sometimes will have a patient come to me that has a high LDL cholesterol. It's 150, 160. And they're a really healthy person. They're in their 70s. Nobody's ever had a heart attack or stroke. They read in Family Circle magazine that they're at risk because their LDL is 150. When I do advanced analysis on them, as long as their particles are less than 100, they're not at risk. Not everybody who has a high LDL cholesterol is going to have a heart attack or stroke. We don't need to put all those people on drugs. And in fact, they can very comfortably walk away feeling as though they actually have a very low risk situation. So LDL cholesterol and LDL particles are not the same thing. I would ask every one of your doctors to have uh, the NMR lipo profile next time you do a test because it's a much more accurate way to assess what's going on. Okay, let me illustrate this another way here. We're going to take two patients, any two of you. You both have LDL cholesterols of 100. Now, LDL cholesterol of 100 is actually a pretty reasonable number. If you've had a heart attack or a stroke, we want it to be less than 70. But an LDL cholesterol of 100 for most people would be considered optimal according to guidelines. If you happen to be somebody who has large particles, can you see this okay? You can see if you have large particles, you're going to be able to fit more of that cholesterol inside each one. And so you're going to have less particles, right? So that would be the scenario I just described. Have a woman come in with an LDL cholesterol of 150, which is elevated, but she has really big particles and there really aren't very many particles floating around. She doesn't develop heart disease. On the other hand, you could have a patient that has an LDL cholesterol of 100 that sounds pretty good, but actually they have really, really tiny particles and each particle contains just a little bit of cholesterol. That patient goes on to have a heart attack or a stroke, even though they had quote unquote normal cholesterol. They actually had very, very abnormal LDL particles, but nobody measured it. Okay? Does that make sense? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Why does the count of particles lead to heart disease? It's ultimately LDL particles that are the drivers of the disease. So the particles are what ultimately lead to the plaque formation. And small particles have properties about them that make them higher risk. 
And so they're more likely to sort of bring in the inflammatory cells and create a higher risk situation. So it's actually the number of particles that produce the plaque. It's like having a number of bricks that build a house. I mean, the more bricks you have, the bigger the house is going to be. The more particles you have, the more plaque is ultimately going to form. So it's the number of part, and this has been shown in multiple clinical trials, that we have clinical trials that have been done looking at hundreds of thousands of patients, where we know who had an event and who didn't. Who in the study had a heart attack? Who died? And the people who had heart attacks and died or had strokes had more particles. Very consistently, this is being seen in the literature <coughs> in, our, in our research. Okay. So it's, it's so the particles are the drivers of the disease. They're not the only thing, though. I mean, obviously, if you have a lot of inflammation in the body, that also contributes to, to formation of plaque. The best way to describe inflammation, and think about what happens when you get a bug bite, you get swelling. You know, you're, you get swelling in your hand. That's your body's inflammatory response to that insult. You got bit, you get swelling. Your body comes in to try to heal it. Think about what's happening when you have too many particles floating around in the bloodstream. They don't have anywhere to go. So what do they do? They jam themselves into the walls of your arteries. That causes an insult to the artery wall. And your body creates an inflammatory response. And all these cells come, basically cause it to swell. So if you're a person who has a more aggressive inflammatory response, because that's just you genetically, or maybe you have a disease like rheumatoid arthritis or asthma or something that produces inflammation, your disease process is more accelerated. So people with lupus, with rheumatoid arthritis, have more advanced cardiovascular disease, and that's because of inflammation. So that plays a role, too. It's not just about having too many particles, but ultimately they go hand in hand. And that's why we, we try to identify all those different things. <coughs> Now, this also, when we think about how we end up treating patients, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we talk about some of the medications we might use. If somebody's the main problem that somebody has is that they overproduce particles in their liver, and they go into the bloodstream, and they basically do what they need to do, make hormones, sell membranes, do everything they need. Those little particles come on back to the liver, and there's a little receptor, like a baseball glove, sitting at the liver. It's called the LDL receptor. And that job is to basically catch those particles, drag them back into the liver, and then recycle them, make more particles, or just excrete them into the intestine. There are people who have genetic problems where their receptor is crooked. It's like this. So all these particles are floating around. The liver's cranking them out. They're trying to get back to the liver, and they can't get back in. That's a genetic disorder called familial hypercholesterolemia. If you have that, Nothing you do with diet and exercise is ever going to impact that number. You need to be on a drug. And there are lots of drugs we use because the only way to fix it is to stop you from producing particles in the liver because we can't make your receptor not be crooked. So those are the types of patients that we have to use medications for. And they're the patients who may try desperately to lower their numbers with diet and exercise and be extremely extremely frustrated when they come back to their doctor after losing 50 pounds and eating a vegetarian diet and exercising every day, and their numbers are the same and maybe worse. That's because they have that genetic problem. But that's, it's fixable.